Thank you, Madam Speaker. The last budget was a disaster, and the next budget will be more lies and more cuts and more chaos. But the problem is, this government's approach to the next budget is presenting some very poor signals for Australia's future. We see cabinet leaking and fighting out in the newspapers. What amazes Labor is that even though their political allies, the New South Wales Liberal Party, are fighting an election on Saturday, this mob opposite cannot contain their chaos even for a few days to help them. What makes it amazing is that we know that Tony Abbott and Mike Baird are great mates, and to be fair, Tony Abbott got at least invited to this Liberal launch. But of course, what we saw most remarkably is that they will let Tony Abbott out, but they won't let him speak. And all I say is that if you won't let him speak at the New South Wales Liberal Convention, why on earth do you inflict him on the rest of Australia? <laughs> but this has been a most chaotic week. It's been a most chaotic week for the government. Well, the, not the least of the chaos is the discovery that in New South Wales, if you answer the telephone, you may or may not get some sort of crank call, or it may indeed be a Malcolm Turnbull robocall, automated pledging a vote. And what is interesting is that the New South Wales Liberal Party think an automated Malcolm Turnbull is better than a real Tony Abbott. I'm not so sure they're right, but it's an interesting theory to debate. But of course, this morning on radio, we learned that Mike Baird was asked why the member for Wentworth was being used for robocalls, not Tony Abbott. Good question. Mike Baird said, Malcolm is very well known. <laughs> now, this is, of course, the problem, because Tony Abbott is very, very, very well known. The people of New South Wales know all about Tony Abbott, so do the people of Australia. But the chaos and confusion isn't just confined to the New South Wales election and the tactics they're trying to do to put Tony Abbott into witness protection. What we saw is that Joe Hockey, again a repeat of earlier styles, they love to hide the bad news before state elections and get them out after voters in a particular jurisdiction have voted. Treasurer Hockey says there's no need for us to reveal the report to Australians, no need to reveal it to the New South Wales government yet, because there's nothing to see, nothing to see. Please keep moving along. Don't look at the scene of the crime. Then we discover today Joe Hockey, again, I mean, produces another thought bubble. That man has a thought bubble factory. He has shares in thought bubble businesses. He produced another thought bubble. He said New South Wales would be $206 million worse off. That's right, $206 million worse off. Because before the last election, before even the last chaotic budget, there was Tony Abbott in Tasmania. I'll look after GST here. Buy across to West Australia. Oh, yeah, I'll look after GST here. These people are all things to all people. The problem is the music stops and the truth catches up with them. Yeah. This next budget will be most chaotic. Of course, there are different ways of dealing with the budget, we find. Now, we've watched um, Julie Sounds Like a Good Idea Bishop talk about, in a Chavez style, let's cap iron ore production. Why didn't we all think about a cartel? Oh, well, that's right. We're not, we're not the foreign minister of Australia. You could see, you could just imagine the red clacks and the lights in the, in the prime minister's office. Look out, another minister on the loose. The only question they asked in the prime minister's office, was it a deliberate attack and undermining of the government, or was it just another mistake from Julie Bishop? And of course, though, we saw the eye roll from the foreign minister about foreign aid cuts. Oh, Mr. Oh, my Lord, Mr. McCormack, this whole government's funny. It would be, except you're running Australia. What we saw is that the Treasurer has ruled out cuts to foreign aid. In this budget, we already acknowledge they've already knocked off $11 billion. That was a good day's work, wasn't it, for those conservative right-wing ideologues? Cut $11 billion off aid to the poorest in the world. But we got an eye roll from the, prime, from the foreign minister. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. From the foreign minister. <laughs> and the Treasurer rules out cuts. What I don't understand is why they won't rule out cuts to schools, to hospitals, to pensioners. Why is it that this government can rule out some things and can't rule out others? Oh, there's Member for Gilmore. I'm sure she, in her private moments, is thinking, good point, good point, Leader of the Opposition. But then, of course, we come back to the chief problem of this budget, or that one of the two, I don't know who's Batman and Robin in this budget, whether it's Tony Abbott and Joe Hockey or Joe Hockey and Tony Abbott, but they've both got a problem. They both own this next budget. And we saw the Prime Minister engage in what he's famous for in economics. He's not that famous for economics, actually. He says, 
the debt, uh, the debt to GDP ratio of about 50 to 60 per cent. He says this. Oh, I won't misquote it. Don't worry. We can't even get the Prime Minister to quote it again. Believe me, believe me, nothing I could do is as good as what this bloke did to himself. He says it's a pretty good result. A pretty good result. My Lord, it does make your channel that question asked on radio. How come for a Rhodes Scholar you say such stupid things, Prime Minister? The problem is this budget is in chaos. Budget is in chaos. This government is in disarray. Now, last year's budget was written by the big end of town, written by uh, Tony Shepherd and Morris Newman from the Business Council of Australia. It was a debased, politicised, ideological process. We saw good public servants sidelined. It was straight from the pen of Tony Shepherd and Morris Newman. Now, the Treasurer made a dreadful mistake handing the pen writing the budget over to the big end of town alone. Business has a role in forming the budget. Of course it does. But a budget should be of the people, by the people, for the people, and that budget last year certainly was not. This government is out of touch. We know that they have no idea how people live their lives in the real world. And there is no signs or no hope that this budget will be any better. Because the two—and this is a big statement, but I think that evidence supports it— the two single worst performers in this government and this stiff competition are the Prime Minister and the Treasurer of Australia. If Tony Abbott was smart, if Tony Abbott was smart, he would give the Treasurer's job to someone else. Here is some free bipartisan advice from the opposition to the government on behalf of the people of Australia. You need a new treasurer, and you need a new treasurer fast. But the problem is, the prime minister, the prime minister, the prime minister, the prime minister can't give away the treasurer's job because the treasurer is glued to the prime minister, and the prime minister is glued to treasurer. They are the modern Thelma and Louise of politics. Their fates inexorably tied. And the problem is that the budget that they politicised, written by the top end of town with its manifest unfairness from a GP tax to pension increases, cuts to the pension rates of pension increases, uh, higher education changes, the dreadful treatment of the unemployed, six months of nothing at all. The problem is that this government couldn't sell their budget because it's manifestly unfair. This is a government with no vision of the future. Their vision of the future is starkly ideological. They can never dig themselves out of the last budget hole because they're not capable of doing it. These people in their lives have never tried to fight an argument about the future of Australia. These two, Hockey and Abbott, could not go two rounds with a revolving door. They cannot fight anyone. They've got no plan in this next budget to make Australia a better destination, a better place for change. They have no view about foreign policy and the change from the west to the east or our part in Asia. All they have is the tired old ideology. We know they get it out of the conservative rule book of 1950, 1960, 1970, 1980. What they say is, let's get rid of bulk billing, and then we can undermine universal Medicare. What they say is, let's bag working conditions in the safety net for working Australians. What they say is, let's freeze superannuation. This mob opposite have never supported an increase to worker superannuation in their lives, ever, ever, ever. The only thing that I expect to see in the next budget is that they will try and save their own skins? Does anyone, when the Prime Minister says this budget is dull, how must he think that that reassures Australians? What that tells Australians is that he and Joe Hockey have given up. Given up. Given up. They've decided that they want it to be dull because that's the only thing they think can hang on to their jobs. The economic policy of this nation. The economic policy of this nation is run by two people's desire for two people's job security. Tony Abbott and Joe Hockey. The government hasn't yet done what it should do. Dump the $100,000 degrees. My, go my goodness me, they've got that education minister, that is a misnomer, running around saying, I'm not beaten, I'm not beating, I want to force up $100,000 degrees. Their GP tax, they'll reinvent that in a different name. They're cutting $80 billion out of hospitals and schools. They're cutting billions of dollars out of New South Wales. And because the retirement age is up, well done, but you've got the pension down and your frozen superannuation. In the next six weeks, the Labor Party will be making sure that we talk to pensioners. We'll be making sure that they understand that Labor will not let Tony Abbott pocket their pension increases. This mob opposite. In the next six weeks, we will hold them to account. We will explain to Australians: no touching the pensions, 
no touching Medicare. We will make sure, we will make sure that this government, in the lead up to the next budget, we will make the sure that we keep them honest.